Navigating the stock market as a complete beginner could be likened to figuring your way around a maze. Challenging, right? Not to worry. This video is a comprehensive beginner's guide to help you start your journey in the stock market. And if you stay with me to the end, I'll share with you some tips that popular billionaires like Warren Buffett use to remain at the top of stock investments. So grab a pen and paper, and let's dive into the video. For easy comprehension, we will be dividing the video into three parts. One, the basics, which also include stock market definition and concepts. Two, investment types and strategies. Three, the required tools needed for trading the stock market. Part one, understanding the basics of the stock market. According to Wikipedia, a stock market, equity market, or share market is the aggregation of buyers and sellers of stocks, also called shares, which represent ownership claims on businesses. These may include securities listed on a public stock exchange, as well as stock that is only traded privately, such as shares of private companies that are sold to investors through equity crowdfunding platforms. Investments are usually made with an investment strategy in mind. In other words, stocks are like owning a tiny piece of a company. When an investor buys a stock, he or she is betting on a company to do well in the future. You might want to ask, why is there so much hype about investing in stocks? People invest in stocks to gain passive income and grow their wealth. As the value of your purchase stocks increases, your overall investment grows as well. This can help you solve financial needs and give you a comfortable ground for a good life after retirement. So, how do you start investing in stocks? Of course, one of the things required before starting is educating yourself thoroughly on how the stock market works. After that, you will be required to open an account online with a brokerage firm, or what we refer to as a broker. A broker helps you to buy and sell stocks online. However, when choosing a broker, you would have to compare different online brokers to find which one best suits you. One of the things to look out for when choosing a broker as a beginner is the fees that would be required, the minimum amount a broker can take, and other features that will enhance your trading generally. You will also need to choose an account type. While choosing an account type, you should consider your investment goals. There are two types of trading accounts. You have the cash accounts. Cash accounts demand that you pay before stocks are owned. You also have the margin accounts. Margin accounts allow you to borrow money to boost your buying power. While this might seem like an obvious choice to new traders, margin accounts are riskier than cash accounts. Another thing that I recommend for beginners trading the stock market is the use of simulators or demo accounts. Some brokers offer paper trading options or stock market simulators that help beginners practice buying and selling stocks with virtual money. This helps you learn without losing any real cash. But remember, investing in the stock market is a long-term game, not a get-rich-quick scheme. As such, it is important to approach the stock market with the right mindset to be profitable. Part 2. Investment Strategies Investment isn't the same for everyone venturing into stock market trading. Your strategy should align with your set goals. It must also align with how much you are willing to risk and how long you are willing to trade. All of these factors are important when choosing a trading strategy. Here are a few trading strategies you must note if you want to maximize your earnings. 1. Value Investing Value investing in the stock market is all about finding undervalued stocks. Companies with strong basics are willing to sell for less than they are worth. People who use the value investing strategy usually analyze a company's monetary situation, checking things like the company's earnings, cash flow, and incurred debts. They take a lot of time to look out for financially healthy companies whose stock prices don't reflect their real value. It is important to note that value investing takes time. The aim is to hold on to the undervalued stocks until their real value and prices increase. It requires a lot of patience. Of course, you've been told as a beginner that one of the things you need to be a profitable trader is to have patience. Now, how do you know when a stock price is undervalued or underpriced? To analyze and determine a stock's value, look at how much money the company has made in the past and how much more it will make in the future. If the stock prices don't match the expected earnings growth, the company could be considered undervalued and a good value to buy. Also, take note of the dividend yield. 
If it is higher than what is normal for the industry or what the company usually pays, the stocks could be cheap and offer a good dividend. In addition to that, calculate the price to earnings ratio. This tells you how much you would need to spend to make a profit. A low price to earnings ratio could indicate that the stocks of that particular company are undervalued. This is generally calculated by dividing the price per share by the earnings per share, EPS. EPS is obtained when you divide the total company profit by the number of shares the company has. Let's give a practical example. Suppose you buy Tesla shares for $30 each. Assume Tesla makes $100 million in profit from $15 million in circulation. The EPS would be calculated as $100 million, $15 million, which equals $6.70 on approximation. The price to earnings ratio will be calculated as $30, $6.70, which equals $4.47. The implication is that you need to invest $4.47 for every $1 in profit. That's it. Warren Buffett is a famous value investor. Many others like him invest just the way he does. While this may be a fantastic way of investing, it might not be the strategy that suits you. Are you willing to find out other ways of investing profitably? This second or third option might just be the one for you, so stay close. 2. Growth Investing Growth investing, as the name implies, focuses on companies with a potential for fast future growth. This company might not have reached its top potential yet, but it thrives in the industry to pave the way for something valuable. This company might be leading a new technology or something similar. Very many investors prefer the growth investing strategy because it has the potential to give huge returns if the company does well. However, they pose a huge threat due to uncertainty. Some of these companies are new and untested, thereby putting a lot of investments at risk. Growth investing is a sharp contrast to value investing. According to Forbes, there are key principles of growth investing strategy. First, look out for companies whose market can grow. For example, the market for electric vehicles with longer ranges is bigger than the market for normal vehicles with shorter ranges. Of course, you already have a company in mind when seeing this. That's right, Tesla. Tesla possesses a market cap of about 460 billion and an average volume of over 100 million. As we continue, we will see how this value aids us in deciding whether to invest or not. Second, observe market trends like AI or cloud computing. Investing in growth stocks provides investors with several advantages. This strategy focuses on long-term investment where investors hold on to stocks for many years to allow companies to grow and increase in value. It also allows for diversification, as including growth stocks alongside more stable ones can help spread out investments and enhance the overall portfolio. Successful growth investing can result in significant profits, as seen with early investments in companies such as TikTok, Amazon, and Google. For instance, companies like Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Facebook have stood out as top performing and highly successful growth stocks in recent years. With all of these mentioned, you must know that growth investing requires a lot of patience and thorough research and poses higher risks. If you are that kind of investor willing to take risks, then growth investing is a good option. However, careful research and proper analysis are requirements for a profitable investment. Back to our Tesla analysis. With Tesla hitting a market cap of over 400 billion and an average volume of over 100 million, you would probably think that Tesla is one sure investment to venture into. Now, this isn't financial advice. However, there are a few things to consider, especially when dealing with growth investing. In 2024, several investors predicted that Tesla stocks would experience slow growth, going up by just 10%. The general idea is to hold and allow growth, causing the value to increase. But what happens when a company is already at its growth peak? A careful study of the industry gives you a better idea of Tesla's potential. 3. Income Investing It focuses on stocks that pay regular income to investors either monthly, annually, or over some time through dividends, interest payment from bonds, or interest-bearing income from other asset types. 
Income investors target established and profitable businesses with a track record of paying out steady dividends. While these stocks may not see rapid growth in their share prices, income investors are more concerned with finding a reliable stream of income, along with the possibility of some price appreciation. The beauty of this type of investment is that companies with consistent dividend records usually have steadier price movements compared to high growth stocks, which can experience more dramatic fluctuations. 4. Dollar Cost Averaging The dollar cost averaging is an investment method used to handle the oopies and downs of the stock market. Rather than investing a large sum of money all at once, you invest a stipulated amount regularly, no matter the stock price. This helps to even out the cost per share over time. Dollar cost averaging is a strategy that can help mitigate the risk of investing a significant amount of money all at once right before a market downturn. By buying shares regularly, regardless of market highs or lows, you have the opportunity to purchase more shares when prices are low and fewer when prices are high. This approach helps to even out the average cost over time. Part 3 tools and resources for trading the market. Picture having the entire financial world right on your device. A stock market app gives you that power. It offers real-time updates on the market, helping you stay informed and make smart investment choices. Financial apps like Bloomberg and Reuters give you an advantage in the stock market. Lots of apps allow you to make a custom watch list following the performance of stocks, ETFs, and indices. You can set up a price alert so that you know when a stock hits a target price, helping you take advantage of market changes. Several apps are designed for beginners, offering educational content. You can learn about various investment strategies, terms, and market basics. All are found in these apps. If you're interested in knowing about these apps, ensure you keep watching until the end of the video, because I'll highlight most of the apps that I've used in trading the stock market. We also have investment tracking apps, which do more than just display numbers. They generally analyze your portfolio's performance, calculating your gains, losses, and overall asset allocation. You can view your investment's performance against the market. Many of these investment tracking apps offer alerts notifying you of important dates like dividend payouts or rebalancing opportunities. Investment tracking apps offer different features to suit various needs. Some offer basic tracking, while others offer advanced tools like news feeds, research, and robo-advisor suggestions. When choosing investment tracking apps, consider your investment style and the level of functionality you prefer. Using an investment tracking app can help you manage your financial future, stay organized, and make smart decisions. Stock screeners are also powerful online tools that help you find companies based on certain criteria, saving you a lot of time searching the internet. Picture yourself sorting through market cap, price to earnings ratio, and dividend yield. Stock screeners offer many filters, allowing you to find your investment chances. As promised earlier, here are the names of a few apps suitable for beginners to begin their trading journey. Yahoo Finance, Sigfig, Mint, Personal Capital, and M1 Finance. It is important to reiterate the fact that stock market trading is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It is a journey that requires a lot of patience. So, as a beginner starting in stock market trading, it is important that you educate yourself properly, do your research, and practice consistently. This will help build your confidence and decision-making abilities. There you have it. Thank you for staying with me till the end of the video. See you next time.